Hey everybody, my name is Ozone and I wanted to go over the famous Impulse SV item sorter. Not in a quick tour, but in excruciating detail. All the details of all the redstone and how it works. When you see a tutorial for this item sorter, it usually goes super quick. It gives It's like all of two minutes long and it doesn't really give you any details. It goes something like this. Put down a chest and then another chest and another chest. Take your hoppers facing into the chests. Then make a design like this with a solid block. First make a T. Then fill in this with a temporary block and do the side and bottom. Break out your temporary block. Put in your repeater. Dust, dust, dust. And a torch on the bottom. Lastly, put a comparator on top and then another hopper pointing into the comparator and fill it with your filter items like this and then the, the item that you want to sort right here in the first column and it will go down to 41 and stay there. Now if you're anything like me when I first saw that okay this shape is memorable I can understand and build this just by looking at the shape but I don't really understand how it works. A lot of the videos don't even begin to break it down and describe it. So let's start with the basics. The really, really basics. You've got a hopper into a chest. You see the tail of the hopper right there is pointing into the chest. And that's how you can control which way the items will flow. If you just put down a chest and then take a hopper and right click the chest, you're going to open the chest. So you got to shift, hold shift while right clicking the shift chest in order to set the hopper such that the tail of the hopper goes into the chest. This is very basic operation really and you throw some items into the hopper, the hopper picks it up and puts it into the chest. But that exposes two or that exposes a very important distinction about hoppers and what they do because they really do two different things and they do them separately. So, for instance, we see that hoppers will push items into a chest. We've seen that before. Okay? But this is one operation. The flip side of the, the other thing that we talked about is that hoppers can pull items from on top of them. Okay? These things, let me throw some down here. The hoppers will pull things from the space above them. In this case, the hopper is pulling it in, storing it into its own internal inventory, but it's not pushing it anywhere because in this case, the tail of the hopper is pointed down into the ground and the ground cannot accept any items. So these are two different operations and that distinction is important to understanding this specific configuration of the hoppers up here. Next, we come to setting up this hopper for this item sorter slice. It works because Hoppers have an inventory, and that inventory will only take in items as long as there's free space for it. So if we put stone in each of the slots of this hopper's inventory, and then throw stone onto the hopper, we see that it picks it up and takes it into the inventory. However, if we throw diorite onto the hopper, it doesn't get picked up because there's no room for diorite in the hopper's inventory. Now, what you'll always see in the setup of this filter hopper is that we use filler items. And in this case, I have some pieces of paper that I have simply renamed in an anvil to be star star filter star star. And we put one of each of those in the other four slots so that we only have one slot full of items of the type that we want to sort out. It's going to be the same thing. If we throw some stone on here, the stone will get picked up. If we throw some diorite on here, the diorite will not get picked up because there's room here for more stone. These filter items, these or filler items, are here just to take up space. And they should be things that will never go through your item sorter system. You could use dirt or sticks. You don't have to rename anything. But you want it to be something that you have a lot of and that you don't really care about. So in this case, I've used paper. Now, we rename them because we want it to be something that will never match any normal 
Minecraft item or any item that goes through your sort of system. So by renaming it, you put an extra layer of protection on there and make sure that it will never match an existing standard Minecraft item. By doing this, we can ensure that this hopper that we're setting up here as the topmost hopper of the slice will only take in one kind of item. Another really important aspect of hoppers is that they can be locked by a redstone signal. So if we place a torch over here or a redstone block or anything else that brings a redstone signal into this hopper, it is now locked. So if we take and put a bunch of stone into the hopper, notice the stone doesn't move anywhere even though there's room in the chest for it because this hopper is locked and in fact even throwing stone on top of the hopper even though there's room in the hopper for it because the hopper is locked means the stone is not even picked up by it so that leads into why are the hoppers faced in this direction why is this hopper not pointing into this hopper below as it would almost seem natural that it should. The reason is that we don't want this hopper to push items into this hopper. We only want this hopper to pull items from this hopper. So by pointing the tail of the hopper into something that can't accept any inventory, we're negating this hopper functioning and pushing items into the hopper below. This hopper below will only pull items from this hopper. Without any of the other redstone, it, it still works as expected. We put a block in here, it goes down into here. We take some stone, throw it up here on this top hopper, and it gets transmitted down through the hopper into the chest. We don't have any redstone to lock it and the rest of the logic to make the item sort of work. But again, separating out the hopper's functionality of pushing and pulling as two separate functions means that this hopper will only pull from above and this hopper will only pull from this hopper and this hopper will not be pushing into the hopper below. The last important component here is a comparator. The comparator is used to measure how full this chest is and generate a signal based on that. So if we put a couple stacks in here, we see the lights come on and we've got some signals coming out down this redstone line because they have a slightly brighter red color. In this case, the signal strength is two. That signal is transmits down the redstone line the number of blocks that the signal strength is. So it's whose signal goes two blocks away. If we add more items, now we have a signal strength of three and that goes three blocks away. This redstone dust is, has a signal on it. Again, out here, this is all unpowered because the signal strength out of this comparator is not strong enough. The signal strength on a redstone from a redstone component goes from 0 to 15. And in the case of a comparator and a chest, that measures as a percentage how full this is. So if we were to not use a chest but instead use a hopper, which also has some inventory, and put in something, now you see we've got less than a stack of items in here, but a signal strength of three, which when we had the chest took a lot more items to generate the same signal strength. That's because a hopper has a lot fewer slots and uh, item capacity. All right, so now it's time to start bringing these things together. Here we have a hopper going into a chest. We also have another hopper on top pointing into this comparator, just like it is up there. This top hopper has been set up to filter out stone with the, the applicable filter items and you can see that the redstone coming out of here is a signal strength of two. This third one is not lit and this hopper down below is locked with this redstone torch. As we demonstrated before because we have the filter set up if you throw an item in here that's not set up in the filter it won't pick it up but if we do put an item in here that is part of the filter it will pick it up and now you see that we've got one more stone in here than before and you see that our signal strength has come out to be three. What we want to have happen is when that change happens this torch goes off very quickly unlocking this hopper allowing it to pull one item from this hopper above essentially removing one item just like we've done manually here. 
thus resetting the signal strength to 2 and turning everything back off again. We can demonstrate this if we're quick enough. So we throw one, one item in here. Now you see we've got 42. If I break and repopulate that hop, that torch real quick, we see that one item is out of here and the signal strength has gone back down to two. So, and we've got, let's show nine or six items in here. Let's throw, do this again, make it in the hopper. And now we're at, uh, this last one is lit up. We have a signal strength of three, 42 is in this top hopper. If we break and reset the torch very, very quickly, now we have one more stone. We have seven stone in here. And this operation, in a nutshell, is what's going on over here. The difference is, this is a very linear way of looking at it, very two-dimensional. We need to be able to essentially wrap this signal from over here all the way back around to be able to turn off this torch, which is what I've done by extending the circuit in this mm, less than optimal way. But functionally, it works exactly the same as that. When we throw in a, a stone, we see the repeater flash. We'll see this torch turn off period, briefly. And each time it lets one item through the filter system and into the chest. We've got 16 in there now. Throw one in. Now we have 17. This is not tileable. This isn't pretty. But it also gives us an opportunity to discuss some of the other aspects of redstone that are being utilized in this layout. Redstone dust on top of blocks will power the block beneath it. This usually isn't that important, although for more complex systems it definitely is but the repeater here the repeater is basically extending the powered signal that this block gets and creating a new redstone line or a new redstone power signal of 15 strength which goes into this block this block has a torch on the side and when a torch is on the side of a block or on the top it has very special properties in that it alternates the state so if we look at this block over here we have a torch feeding some redstone into that block that block is now powered and if we have a torch on the other side or the top you see that they're currently unpowered they alternate the state if we remove this torch and remove the power to this block the to torches revert to their default state of powered. We put the torch back on, power that block again, the torches go off. So lastly, we get to the shape. The shape is the shape that it is because Redstone and, well, Minecraft is a 3D environment. And Redstone also operates in a 3D environment. This is um, a, a two-dimensional um, adaptation of the item sorting system and it's not very elegant. This uses the 3D space to the full advantage in order to wrap the signal down and back around to turn off this torch. So to recap completely, the comparator on the hopper keeps the signal strength at two. When one single item comes into that hopper, the signal strength of three turns reaches this redstone dust, which powers this block. Powering this block, causes the repeater to amplify the signal and power this block in front of it. Powering this block, in turn, turns off this torch, unpowering this block and unlocking this hopper, allowing it to take one item out of the filter. When that one item is removed from this hopper, the signal strength reverts to two, depowering this block, turning off this repeater, depowering this block, allowing the redstone torch to again power, repowering this block and locking this hopper once again. It all happens very, very quickly and you don't even notice it. But this round trip happens every time a single item goes through the item sorter system. But wait, didn't you say that you would tell us all about the why there's exactly 41 items in the hopper? Yes, I did. And now we finally get to it. Now this design is one wide tileable, which means that if you take one slice you can tile it next to a neighbor 
one by one by one down the line, meaning that you can have a whole bunch of these sorters all lined up together. And because it's one wide tileable, the redstone from each slice does not interfere with the neighboring slice, even though the dust looks like it might be joined up and might cause problems. It in fact does not. But because no, no single one of these is ever going to put out more than three redstone dust, it's safe. You're allowed to do that. So it is certainly possible to reconfigure the hopper here so that we have 45 total items in it without using 41 of a particular of our sorter item. So we can take all this out, put in a bunch of more of these renamed filter items, and the same thing happens. We've got two signal strength here, and the third one is not lit. And if we put a single stone into the hopper, it filters down through and goes into the chest. So one stone there. We'll throw another one in. And now we've got two stone. And it appears to work. And it can work under the right circumstances. It all depends on how the items are delivered to your item sorter system, which I haven't even talked about here, and, don't, and I'm not even showing you. But the problem can happen is if you have a large amount of things that come in at the same time. Say, I'm going to put all 40 of these items in here. Well, now you see we've got the 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 third we've not only gotten a third signal but a fourth signal that's unlocked this hopper and our our sorter items in here have been sucked out erroneously they shouldn't have been because we put so many items into this first slot that now instead of maxing out at three we actually hit four signal strength and it bled over into the next slice and caused part of those items to get sucked down. If it happens enough, it can completely drain this filter hopper, and then it's not filtering at all. Everything that you're trying to do is going in here, including your filter placeholder items, which you don't want. So this is the reason why 41 is recommended. It is possible to do other configurations, but if there's 41 of the item that you want to sort out, it means that even if an entire stack comes by and somehow gets into this hopper, it won't take it all in, and so the signal strength for this line will never go above three. It will never bleed over and cause problems with your other slices. So that's it for now. I really hope that you found this video useful. It's been my pleasure to try to make it. We'll see you again in part two where we talk about delivery mechanisms for bringing the items to your item sorter, which allows for a whole bunch of flexibility and options.